Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be wrapping up our discussion of techniques of integration. And the new technique I'm going to be giving you today is integration by completing the square. But we're also going to do a little bit of comparing and contrasting of some integrals, including some ones that we haven't seen in a while. But before we start, let's look at the AP Calculus course description and see, like, what all have we done? I clipped all of the things that have to do with, you know, integration and techniques of integration. So substitution of variables is a technique for finding antiderivatives. That's u substitution, u du. And we also know that if I'm running a definite integral and I have to use u du, I need to change the balance also. Okay, we know that. Okay, techniques for finding antiderivatives include rearrangements into equivalent forms. Okay, that's like all of the algebra tricks that we've done, you know, dividing through by, you know, when there's one factor in the denominator or using the distributive property. Long division, for us, that's probably synthetic division, right? We saw a little bit of that last time, or maybe this is the time before. And also completing the square. Completing the square is going to be what's new to us today. But a lot of these things, you know, pretty much everything else we've already done. Yeah, integration by parts, that's UDV. It's a technique for finding antiderivatives. We've already done that. Rational functions, some of them can be decomposed into basically partial fractions that are linear, non-repeating factors. And then you apply basic integration techniques. We've done that. That was 9.2. And then over here, an improper integral, that was last time. That's an integral that has one or both limits in infinite or has an integra integrand that has a vertical asymptote somewhere in the inter interval we're integrating on. And the, we learned last time that we can deal with these by using the limit of a definite integral. So let's just move forward and do the last thing that we haven't done yet, which is completing the square. I want to start you off with three examples. And that's kind of what I'm going to keep doing in this video. I'm going to keep comparing and contrasting integrals and then, you know, folding in our new techniques. So if you look at the far left on, at the blue integral, we look at the denominator and say, hey, I can factor that, and I know how that's going to factor. It's going to factor into x minus 8 times x minus 2. And those are two distinct factors, so I'm going to need to use the partial position. And so if you need practice on that, you should pause the video right now, work it yourself, and then check your answer against mine, because I'm just going to show you how this plays out. So just like always, you know, we can factor it in distinct factors. We set up to break it apart with partial fractions. We run through the algebra steps, and then our integration becomes much easier. And, and if you need more practice on that, I would encourage you to go back a couple of lessons to 9.2, where we were talking about integrating quotients, and I got a lot of practice on that. Okay, the one in the middle in red, this is one you look at it and say, hey, I can factor this too. But when I factor it, it's going to be x minus 5 and x minus 5. So I could write that as x minus 5 squared in the denominator. And well, I could just rewrite that in a way that would make it really easy to anti-differentiate, right? I'm just going to apply the power rule to this. So I'm going to say this is x minus 5 to the negative 1 power divided by negative 1, right? Add 1 to the power divided by the new power. And then I'm going to check my antiderivative to make sure it works. Yep, yeah, positive x minus 5 to the negative 2 times 1. Yeah, all good. And then we're going to add a plus c. Okay, so there's that. But this green one, this doesn't factor. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this if I can't factor it? And what you're supposed to do, and this is the new thing called completing the square, is if you look at the green one and you compare it to the one on the left, it's just one bigger in the denominator. So I'm going to just write it like that. And I'm going to say, well, that x squared minus 10x plus 25, oh, I've already dealt with that. I factored it just recently, and it became x minus 5 squared. And if we rewrite that way, well, then you might see what's going to happen here. But if you still don't see what this antiderivative is, hold on, don't give up yet. Let me rewrite this a different way for you. I'm going to use u equals x minus 5 so that du is dx. Okay, And then, hopefully, when you look at 1 over u squared plus 1 or 1 over 1 plus u squared, you look at that and you recognize, oh, that is the derivative of a function that you know, it's on the list of functions I need to know their derivative, right? I need to know that that antiderivative of 1 over u squared plus 1 is inverse tangent of u. Okay, but u is equal to x minus 5, so this is equal to inverse tangent of x minus 5 plus c. And this is what we would call integration by completing the square. 
at least an AP calculus. Now, out in the wider world of integrals, there are definitely other integrals that require, you know, algebraic techniques like completing the square that aren't going to work out like this. And I'll even show you another one where we're going to complete the square and get, you know, a different type of art trig. But I really believe, in my professional opinion, that this is the way, if it was going to show up on the AP exam, it would look like this. It would be one off from a perfect square in the denominator. And I think you'll see why as I move forward in this video and show you a different one. Now, if you wanted to try this yourself, I'll give you a couple of examples that would work out the exact same way. I'll just throw these in right here. And this is three examples of integrals that are going to go the exact same way as the one I did in green on the left. Okay, they're all off from a perfect square in the denominator by plus one. Okay, and the big thing here, the way that you'll recognize that you need to integrate by completing the square is that it looks like an error or a mistake or a typo or something. You look at this and you're like, man, 50, that's 10 and 5, not 10 and 4, right? Or it's 25 and 2, and it's just like, I can't find two numbers that multiply to 50 and add to 14. Or x squared minus 4x plus 5. You're like, that's supposed to be a minus 5, right? So I can make it x minus 5 and x plus 1. But no, it's not an error. It's just a complete the square integral. So if you look at one of these and the denominator looks like it's really close to factorable, but it's not quite, you need to think, oh, maybe it's an arc trig integral. All right, let's move on. I right here I've got three more integrals that look kind of similar, but are in you know, some ways different. And I want to run through each of these. And again, two of these will be ones that we already know how to do, and one of them will be a complete the square type integral. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say, all right, 36 minus x is square root. That's the same as 36 minus x to the 1 half power. I can anti-differentiate that, right? As long as I don't have like an x squared or something on the inside, you know, or some other function, I should probably be able to work with this. So I'm going to take the thing, I'm going to add 1 to the power, and then I'm going to divide by the new power. Okay. And then I'm going to add a plus c. Okay, and I'm going to... I'm always mentally double checking my antiderivative just to make sure we have some two thirds is one, 36 minus x to the negative, or three halves minus one is negative, or is positive one half. But then that negative one for the chain rule, okay, I almost made the same error I made in class. I said that I was going to put a negative on there, and then I didn't. Okay, but this time I'm going to remember and I'm going to make it negative two thirds so that when that negative comes out for the chain rule, it makes positive one times 36 minus x to the half power. Okay. The one in red, this one you might be looking at and saying, hey, you just said you can't do anything if you've got 36 minus x squared inside the square root. And that's true. There's not really anything that we can do in this class algebraically to deal with it. Um, I think that you could deal with it. It would just require trig substitution. But that's not part of AP calculus. So for us, what we need to do is we need to look at this and say, wait a second. I know that y equals the square root of a squared minus x squared. That makes a circle, that really the top half of a circle, centered at the origin with radius equal to a. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to draw a picture. And I'm going to use geometry to solve this integral. So if you know that this square root of 36 minus x squared makes the equation of the upper half of a circle with radius 6 centered at the origin, then we could find out this integral without too much difficulty, right? We just use a formula from geometry. Okay. So say we're interested in finding that amount of area, which is going to be 1 fourth of pi times radius squared. We know 6 to the 2 is 36, and 36 divided by 4 is 9, so that's going to be 9 pi's worth of area. Okay. Now this one on the right, this one is also going to be a complete the square integral. But I think that it, we're going to just zoom in and, and investigate this one on its own. But when we do this, I think you'll see why it is my opinion that you know an arc tangent type integral is going to be much more likely than one like this that's going to pull back arc sine or arc cosine. So let's just zoom in on this one and do some investigation. All right. The thing with this one is that it looks kind of similar to an integral that we are just supposed to know, which is that the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 
minus u squared du is equal to inverse sine of u maybe plus c okay that's the one that we're supposed to know it looks kind of similar but it's like how am i going to work this around and get it to be something i can you know more easily take the antiderivative of and so we're going to have to hit this one with some pretty heavy duty algebra so i'm going to factor out the 36 because i want a 1 minus something squared right so i got 36 times 1 over well, if I am dividing all the terms by 36, I'll just have x squared divided by 36. And all of this is still inside the square root and under a 1 in the fraction, right? dx. Okay. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a property of radicals that we can say that's the square root of 36 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 36. Except I'm not going to write it as x squared over 36. I'm going to write it as x over 6 squared for reasons that I hope will become more obvious in just a moment. I'm still integrating 1 over that with respect to x. All right. Now, this 36 square root in the denominator, I know that is equivalent to like multiplying the function by 1 sixth. And I also know that I can factor out that constant multiple. So I'm going to say that's 1 sixth of the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x over 6 squared dx. And now I'm going to use a u substitution. So I'm going to say let u equal x over 6 making du equal to one-sixth of dx. And I just have dx, so that's going to be 6 times d. I'll go back over here and say, all right, this has become one-sixth of the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So that's promising. D, but then dx is 6 du, so I need to multiply by 1, 6 du. And then the 6 and the 1, 6, they're going to cancel, right? I could, or I could factor out the 6 and make it 6 over 6. And I'm just taking the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, which I showed you up above, is arc sine of u. Okay, so I'm going to say that's arc sine of u equals x divided by 6 plus c. Okay. And I mean, that's doable. It's something, it's a lot of algebra though. This is going to be a calculus test, not an algebra test. This is significantly more algebra than the arctangent ones that I showed you before. And I also think that just also based on kind of the ambiguity here, you could also say that this was the negative of inverse cosine of x divided by 6 plus c, and it would just be a different c. And so, you know, the similarity between the derivatives of arc sine and arc cosine. And, I mean, I have seen this problem as a multiple choice one before, but it was from like 40 or 50 years ago. So I just think that this one is less likely to show up on your AP exam than the ones like this. Where it was really only one, al one really serious algebra step of splitting it into the perfect square plus one and then factoring you know, looking at this, where I had to do a whole bunch of algebra and then do a U substitution, I just think that this is less likely. Okay, now to summarize the techniques of integration for CalBC, because now we've got all of the techniques, you know, and I didn't put in, you know, just like the power rule and just, you know, Antiderivatives we're supposed to know, like the antiderivative of cosine x or the antiderivative of secant squared x, or the antiderivative of e to the x. You know, I didn't include those. But the techniques we've got are geometry, which we've been, you know, integrating using geometry for quite a while. Usually we're given a picture, but occasionally we are, you know, given an equation and we need to recognize. We saw that in this video. Algebraic manipulation, we've been doing that since the beginning as well. That's like using the distributive property. I mean, I think you could really consider partial fractions, long division, and complete square algebraic manipulations. But, you know, your more basic algebraic manipulations, we've been doing those since we learned how to anti-differentiate. U-substitution, okay, that's one that we, you know, found a little challenging. 
And if you needed more practice on that, you could go back and look. That's uh, lesson 6.3 in my AP Calculus class. There's integration by parts, which is part of 9.1, where we were integrating products. You've got partial fractions, which was in 9.2. It was part of 9.2, where we were integrating quotients. Long division was also part of 9.2. And if you remember, we thought we felt like a long division was much less likely than synthetic division. And then complete the square was what you learned how to do today. And so, you know, with all of these things, we have covered all of the techniques of integration. There's not going to be anything else coming at you that you don't know how to do yet. It's just going to be an issue of deciding which technique to use when. And I've got some worksheets on that. I've got UDU versus UDV, all of them together. Uh, I've got a variety of practice materials. So if you need any of those practice materials and you're not finding them available to you, you know, where you would normally find your practice stuff, you should just contact me and, and have me send you some stuff. But that's all I got for you for this video. Thanks for watching.